Hello again, everyone. My name is Marty Guthmiller. I am CEO at Orange City Area Health System on December 4, 2020, bringing you today the 76th edition of our COVID-19 community briefing. Uh, as it is the end of the week and has been our practice, I'm gonna start right off with the uh, Sioux County uh, test results or test uh, numbers. <clears throat> And I noticed today that the coronavirus.iowa.gov website has changed things up. And so um, added more data, uh, it's, it's gonna be confusing for a little bit, but I, I tried to get the, the same data. So we're comparing apples to apples here. And so here we go. Sioux County, there's been 12,109 individuals tested. Now that differs from the, the number of tests but that's the individuals tested. And these are the numbers I've been giving you over, over the last uh, 75 previous times. 12,109 individuals tested, 3,845 of those positives. That has been a 31.75% positivity rate. That is 136 more positives since Monday. The 31.75 compares previously to 31.2, 30.7, and 29.5. So relatively consistent there, maybe slightly up, but, but pretty, pretty stable numbers. <clears throat> Moving into the 14-day average, Sioux County is number 20 now in the state at 20.8 14-day positivity uh, average. That number is down from 23.3, the time before that 26.3, and the time be before that 30.3. So in our last four briefings, we've gone from a high of 30 down now consistently to uh, 20.8. It's, it's dropped consistently over the last four briefings. 20.8% Sioux County, 14 day average, number 20 in the state. Lyon County is number three in the state at 26.0%. Previously, they were at 31.3, 34.2, and 31.7. So they've dropped, uh, generally speaking, about five percentage points as well. Plymouth County, number six in the state at 25.0%. They've been at 24.2, 25.2, and 31.1. So, uh, kind of steady there, maybe down just a little bit. O'Brien County, number 37 uh, in the state at 19.5. Uh, again, pretty consistent. They were at 19.4, um, 18.9, and 25.3. Number one, by the way, in uh, the state of Iowa is Kasuth County at 29.1%. So that, that number one slot is a, is a much lower percentage than it's been as well. Number two is Cherokee at 28.3, and there are 96 of 99 counties in the state of Iowa at 11.7% or higher. So that's still a big number. Um, <clears throat> here's a new stat that I'll probably be keep track of, because but, but it's particularly important today. Um, the the coronavirus.iowa.gov website is providing um, now seven day average uh, percentages as well. So even a little smaller snapshot of what's going on. Um, and here, here's a number that I gleaned from, from the data. The individual positives per 100,000 population in the last seven days in Sioux County uh, would equate to 360.9. So 360.9 positive individuals out of a population of 100,000 people. That doesn't mean a lot in and of itself, just that number. But what, what does matter is that the percent change over the previous seven days was a negative 119.36%. So the 360 is, is a, has dropped 119% from where it was. That's a good thing. Um, it's a very good thing. Um, it's hard to say what the 360 per 100,000 population actually means, but dropping it 119% um, is, is a very good thing. So I'll continue to watch that 
and uh, report those, those things back to you as we go forward. I also want to point out that we are not uh, out of the woods yet. We are not through this by any means. Our numbers by and large look better. Um, and we'll talk about that. For example, um, we have, as of this morning, we have 14 inpatients at Orange City Area Health System, five of which are COVID. Um, and so that, that is still very real. Um, I know other hospitals in the area have higher numbers than that in terms of COVID. Um, and so we're, we're, doing, we're doing better, um, but we all know of people who have recently passed away from um, this virus. And uh, as an example, I, I have a, a friend who's currently on a ventilator um, who's my age. Um, and uh, so it's very real. Um, and so let's, let's not fall asleep by, by um, thinking that these numbers are better and things are, are going away. They are getting better, uh, but they haven't gone away yet. Shifting back into region three, the 20 counties in Northwest Iowa, again, good news. Uh, our hospitals, uh, hospitalizations in the 20 county region are down. They're at 179. They were at 205, 205 before that, and 218 before that. So 179 is definitely heading in the right numbers. Now again, pursuant to my previous comments of things are still very real, we have 31 patients in region three in the ICU. 18 of those 31 patients are on ventilators. Um, that, that's a, over 50% of the ICU patients in region three are on vents. Now, the, the number of folks in the ICU is down from 41, 37, and 38, but the number of vents is, is pretty, pretty high yet. And, and still, again, in accordance with things are not over, uh, we had 29 admissions in the last 24 hours um, in Region 3. So uh, kind of a little bit of a mix. We have fewer patients in the hospital in Region 3, but the ones that are are really sick. In Iowa, um, some, some new numbers again, but the ones we've been reporting consistently are 1,237,164 individuals tested. Of those tested, 239,689 were positive. That's a 19.4% rate. Continues to climb. Uh, the time before was 18.9, time before that 18.3, Time before that, 16.9. So 19.4 continues to uh, climb. That's where we currently are. Um, here, here are some other things, though, that help and, and that maybe mitigate that a little bit. Uh, Iowa, the last 14 day, the 14 day average in Iowa in terms of positives, 16.6%. So that's less than 19.4. Uh, that's a good thing. Another, the, the shorter uh, snapshot is a seven day positives. And these are new stats that are, are just made available now on coronavirus.iowa.gov uh, website. The seven day positive uh, in the state of Iowa is 14.4. So the seven day positive 14.4, 14 day positive 16.6 would, would tend to indicate that we're, we're going down a little bit, um, but we're still, Overall, uh, we're still at 19.4%. The number of hospitalizations, um, I'm sorry, the number of Iowa residents hospitalized somewhere is 1,162. Uh, that includes 55 Iowans who are hospitalized out of state. So 1,162. That is down from 1,175, so slightly, but down before that, uh, the time before that was 1,333, and the time before that, 1,279. So 1,162 is definitely an improvement and, and a, a good thing. Northwest Iowa is a little bit of a mixed bag, uh, probably largely up. Uh, Sioux County has 14 residents hospitalized. That number was previously 10. O'Brien County, three, the number previously was six. Lyon County, two, the number was previously three. Plymouth County, 20, 
their, their number was previously 13. Woodbury County, 57, down slightly from 59. And Polk County, uh, number one in the state, uh, again, uh, is 111. They are down from 126, and the time before that, 137. So generally speaking, the uh, hospitalizations uh, of Iowa residents are down somewhat similarly to uh, Region 3 hospitalizations as well. The number of deaths in uh, Iowa has uh, risen 200 this week uh, to 2603. Sioux County has officially 29 deaths as of this morning. The demographic is very similar to what it's been. 92% uh, of those deaths are 60 years and over. 53% of those deaths, so over half of those deaths are 80 and above, 80 plus years of age. I'm gonna to switch to uh, a couple general comments. We, we've had some comments on um, our Facebook page relative to uh, a number of things. And uh, I'm not a clinician and I'm not going to uh, get into some of, of the answers to the questions. Uh, we will have uh, some clinical folks join us, perhaps Dr. Laird uh, in the future. And we'll talk about some of those other things. But I'm gonna talk about a couple um, uh, questions and address uh, a couple of the topics that that you've expressed interest in um, and and one of those things and because these kind of all fit together in a way is what is the length of immunity uh, I've had the I've had the uh, COVID virus I want to know how long I'm immune um, well that's that's a good question uh, and the real answer is nobody knows for sure um, however there's, there's some pretty good, pretty good data out there. Um, the conventional number has been three months, 90 days. Um, I've, I've been made available a study uh, that was just published on, uh, I think it was October 13. Um, it's published on October 13. And <clears throat> it, it this isn't a definitive answer, but again, it, it adds to the body of evidence. Um, the study reports, here are the highlights of the study. <clears throat> uh, neutralizing and spike-specific antibody prote production persists for at least five to seven months. So uh, from what, what, in my terms, uh, it looks like you're immune from five to seven months based on this study. The antibodies, and this backs this up, the antibodies become undetectable by five to seven months. So again, uh, it looks like about uh, that six month window is, is what we're looking at. So five to seven months. Um, and antibody production is higher in severe disease than in mild cases. Uh, so in, in my particular case, um, I had a very mild bout with the coronavirus, that probably means I have fewer antibodies than somebody who got really sick. Um, and and that, that kind of makes sense to a layperson as well. Um, so this study would say, generally speaking, immunity lasts five to seven months. Um, I've also been in conversation with people who are in the know and uh, in, in larger health systems and part of research teams and things like that. Their, their word, what they're telling folks is six months. And so that, that fits very much within the five to seven month range. And so I think it'd be reasonable to uh, say at this point um, that you could expect a six month immunity. But again, that's not necessarily scientific, but it's about as close as, as we can get to today. So that, that's important. So let's keep that six month immunity uh, in mind. The other question uh, dealt with herd immunity, and that's kind of a sensitive topic. Um, and and I, I listened to a video the other day that kind of explained there's actually a formula uh, to compute herd immunity. 
and it, it's not particularly complicated formula, but it, it's a uh, one minus one over R naught. And, and the R naught is how many people a COVID patient would typically infect. And if you assume that uh, if, I, if I had the virus, I would affect two people, um, that would be one minus one over two. If you would assume that I would infect three people, that's one minus one over one over three. So, so one minus one half was gonna be 50%. One minus one third is two thirds is 67%. So the, the rough herd immunity number that you're, you're talking about is 50 to 67% required for herd immunity. <clears throat> let's take, let's take a, the, the upper lemon of the, that and let's say 67%. Let's round it up to 70% because I can do that math a little bit easier. Um, <clears throat> When to reach herd immunity, you would have to reach 70%, that 70% number. The formula for uh, calculating that is the efficacy of your vaccine times the percent vaccinated or the percent immune. So in Sioux County, um, the, with the efficacy of the vaccine, let's say the efficacy of the vaccine is 90%. We would need 80% of Sioux County to be immunized to get to the 70% herd immunity level. 80%, that's a big number. Um, and so when, when, we, when we look at what it would take to get there, you say, well, I'm not gonna get immunized because I'm immune already. Well, that's fine, and you can be counted into the immunization group until such time that you're not immune. Well, when is that? Um, and and so we're we're really looking at uh, a situation where I don't believe in in looking at these numbers that we're necessarily going to reach herd immunity in terms of the definition of it, um, because I don't believe that 80% of of the county is going to get immunized based on preliminary surveys and studies that, that I've seen, that 80% that of the population is not gonna do it, is not gonna have the vaccine. And we'll talk a little bit more about the vaccine in just a second. So the bottom line is uh, we need to reach about 70%. We need about 80% of the county po uh, immunized times the efficacy factor to get to that number. Um, and I don't think we can rely on uh, folks like me who have had the disease because we don't know for sure how long it's going to last. Um, and we don't exactly know how long immunity will last from the vaccine either. That hasn't been officially uh, determined either. So that's kind of where we are with herd immunity. It's something to keep a look at. Um, but, but it's, it's probably gonna to be tough to, to get to it. Now talk a little bit about the vaccine. I have some information that was sent out yesterday by the um, Iowa Department of Public Health. And it, it, maybe it's helpful, maybe it's not, but <clears throat> the, the Pfizer vaccine, as we've talked about, is, is showing a 95% efficacy. On, on the, the sidebar here, our, my understanding is that the folks who developed this, the Pfizer, the Modernas, they didn't expect 95%. They expected probably something that's more normal at 60 or 70. So the 95 was a very pleasant surprise, uh, we're being told. Um, so Pfizer, 95%. Moderna, 94.5% efficacy. Pfizer, two doses are required at least 21 days apart. Can be more, but can't be less. Moderna, two doses are required 28 days apart. Pfizer is the ultra cold storage uh, that you've probably heard about that needs to be kept at 70 degrees negative, negative 70 Celsius. And what's thawed is stable for five days. So if we get a, a shipment uh, we would need to be able to 
assure that we could use that shipment within five days. The Moderna requires minus 20 degrees Celsius and will stay stable at two to eight degrees Celsius for 30 days. So Moderna does not have to be kept as cold um, and is stable for 30 days at a temperature that, that a normal freezer would be. Phase 1A, uh, which is being uh, allocated at this point, would apply to certain healthcare personnel, um, nurses on the floor, nurses in the ER, doctors, that kind of thing, um, frontline caregivers uh, would be prioritized, as would residents of long-term care facilities. Um, and obviously that's, uh, that's a no-brainer uh, when you look at the death rate of, of the 80 plus group. Um, that's a, that's a very reasonable thing. Um, the CDC is allocating COVID-19 vaccine to Iowa based on population and target uh, markets. IDPH uh, estimates that Iowa in the first three weeks of December will receive 172,000 doses. Um, now, how many Sioux County gets, uh, we don't know. Uh, we don't want to get more than what we can give um, at this point. And so we are, we are surveying healthcare providers. Uh, we know how many nursing home residents we have, things like that. Um, so we want to make sure, and we're talking to each other uh, within the county, and we'll be coordinating with community health partners and, and how the distribution works. Um, everything is staged and set and ready to go is what I'm trying to say. Um, but we'll have 172,000 doses in the next three weeks, you know, and with the millions of population we have in Iowa, it gives you an idea. Uh, not everybody's going to be able to get it. And that's why you hear in the news reports that maybe by next June, everybody will have access to it. Uh, it will take a while, but we're going to hit the highest risk population first. And that will probably start um, in the next couple of weeks. Um, and so that's, that's some information on, on the uh, vaccine. Um, one of the things that we want to certainly encourage is um, getting it. Um, this is going to be similar to a flu shot in terms of we want you to get this. Um, we, the more people that get immunized, the closer we can get to that herd immunity. Uh, we think it's important to get it. Uh, there has never been a vaccine that's been developed this quickly. Uh, but there has never been a vaccine that has been studied at this level either. Um, the scrutiny on this vaccine has been unprecedented. And uh, it is believed to be safe. We believe it's safe. Um, the proof's in the pudding, obviously, but um, the, due to the mechanisms of how this uh, vaccine works, and I'm not going to uh, try to explain that to you. I'll, I'll bring in somebody that knows what they're talking about to do that. Um, but at this point, uh, we're certainly encouraging the vaccine. It's been studied and tested, and it is uh, in part made possible because of the new research in genetics and, and things like that. So um, we believe the vaccine to be very safe at this point. Um, we appreciate your questions. Uh, we realize we can't get to all of them, um, but uh, Please continue to submit them if you have them. Uh, we'll bring in guests to, to address uh, various questions in the future as we need to. Um, again, I, I implore you to uh, stay strong. Uh, we're in the final laps of this, but we're not finished. This race is not over. There are still people fighting for their lives right now. There are still healthcare workers uh, up against it in terms of uh, keeping people healthy and, and keeping people safe. And so please stay strong through this, stay vigilant in your uh, hand hygiene, your masking, your social distancing, um, because we all help hope in the end that you do stay healthy. And so thank you for joining us. We appreciate your comments. We appreciate your trust and confidence placed in us. And um, uh, we anticipate the next briefing uh, to be on Monday and hopefully uh, it'll be with uh, continued declining numbers. So thanks for joining us. Have a great weekend.